The Mouse Written by Hector Hugh Munro aka Saki Theodore Vola was a middle-aged man who had led a very sheltered life. From the moment that he was born, his mother had protected him from the rough and rude parts of life. When she died, she left Theodore in a world that was much rougher and ruder than he had expected it to be, with the result that he was easily annoyed by things that were not quite right. For a man like Theodore, traveling in a railway carriage was not very pleasant, especially if he had to travel in second class. The windows were never clean enough, the seats were always either too soft or too hard, and his fellow passengers annoyed him by coughing, talking, moving around, or humming tunes. On this occasion, he was pleased to note, as he entered the carriage and settled into his seat, that he had only one fellow passenger, a middle-aged lady who seemed to be fast asleep in the corner. He could smell something, however, and he didn't like it, although he knew that it did not come from his fellow passenger. He could smell mice. He had been staying with his mother's friend, a vicar, and when the time came for him to go to the train station he went into the stable to help harness the horse. He did not like being in stables because they were always dirty and smelly. This time, he had smelled mice, and as he sat in the carriage he imagined that some of the straw from the stable had stuck to his shoes or trousers and that he could still smell it. Fortunately, the middle-aged lady, being asleep, did not notice it. The train had only just begun to move when he noticed that he was not alone in the carriage with the sleeping lady. In fact, he was not even alone in his own clothes. He felt a warm creeping movement on his leg and instantly realized that what he could smell was not straw from the stable, but a mouse from the stable that had somehow got into his clothes while he was harnessing the horse. He stamped his foot and shook his leg, but the mouse did not want to leave the warm dark place it had found. Theodore lay back against the cushions and wondered what to do. It would be an hour before the train stopped, and allowing the mouse to stay there all that time was unthinkable. On the other hand, the only way to get rid of it was to remove most of his clothes, but just thinking about undressing in front of a lady made his face red with embarrassment. He looked at the lady in the corner, who was still asleep. The mouse seemed to be making a grand tour of his body, and suddenly it bit him. Theodore made the bravest decision of his life. His face turned the color of a beet as, keeping a nervous watch on the sleeping lady, he took his railway blanket, tied it to the luggage racks to make an almost private dressing room in the carriage, and began to undress. Then when he was almost naked, several things happened all at once. The mouse escaped from his clothes and ran into a corner of the carriage. The railway blanket fell to the floor, and his sleeping fellow passenger woke up and opened her eyes. Theodore moved almost as quickly as the mouse. He picked up the blanket and covered himself with it as he sat in the other corner of the carriage. He could feel the blood racing through his veins and beating in his neck and forehead as he waited for the lady to pull the emergency cord to stop the train and complain about the almost naked gentleman in her carriage, but she just sat and stared silently at him. He wondered how much she had seen and what she thought about his present position, covered with a blanket. I think I have caught a cold. He said. I'm sorry to hear that. She said. I was just going to ask you if you would open this window. I think it is a serious cold. He said, his teeth chattering from fear. I've got some brandy in my bag if you'd like to get it down for me. She said. Of course, Theodore couldn't do that without revealing more of himself than he wanted his fellow passenger to see. No, it's all right. I never take anything for it. He wondered what to do next. How could he get dressed before they arrived at the station? He decided that he would try and tell her what had happened. Are you afraid of mice? He asked. No, not unless there are lots and lots of them. She replied. Why do you ask? I had one crawling inside my clothes just now, which was very uncomfortable. Yes, I suppose it would be. I had to get rid of it while you were asleep, and that's why I am like this. He said. Surely getting rid of one small mouse wouldn't give you a cold. She replied. Theodore thought she was enjoying his problem, and he became redder than ever. Then he suddenly realized that the train would arrive at the station soon, and he would still be undressed. 
He sat quietly, hoping that the lady would go back to sleep. She didn't. I think we must be getting close to the station now. She said. Theodore had to act. He stood up, throwing the blanket onto the floor, and struggled back into his clothes. He was so embarrassed that he almost choked, but he did not dare to look at the corner where his fellow passenger remained completely silent. Finally, he was dressed, and he sank back into his seat, his heart racing and his face throbbing. He had never felt so bad in all his life. Then the lady spoke. Would you be so kind as to get me a porter for my bag? I don't like to trouble you because you are unwell, but being blind makes things difficult at railway stations. 